Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter. Today I'm on camera to do something a little bit different than I normally do. I thought I would kind of explore showing you guys some additional things that I like to do in the studio, which is I like to play and have some fun doing some exercises to enhance my brush skills and my painting techniques and all that good stuff. So today, I thought it would be super fun to actually paint blindfolded. <laughs> so that way I can really kind of concentrate on my, my hand movement and my brush stroke and stuff like that. So I thought what better way to do this than to follow one of my own videos. <laughs> so I picked a video out that has a limited palette, limited brushes. It's a kind of a shorter, relatively shorter uh, video and I thought this would be super fun. So I'm painting blindfolded today. Wish me luck. <laughs> All right, I think I am ready to go. <laughs> as ready as I'm gonna get, so play. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are doing the first layer to our sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the colors that I'm using are blue, black, brown, and white. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a really nice dark blue color as the base color for my sky. So I've magically pre-mixed it, but I'm gonna show you oh. how I got there. Well, you've magically so pre-mixed it. I got that it. I'm going for. Okay, black. How I got there is I used blue. all of my blue except for this little bit here that I'll use for a demonstration, and I added blue. a little bit of black oh, no. to it and a little bit of brown. So the black will very easily take over. So you just add a teeny tiny bit at a time. <laughs> And the brown I use just to kind of okay. neutralize that blue a little bit so it's not so blue-blue. It turns it a little bit more of, okay. a, um, of a natural blue. This thing. is fun already. So I can tell you that. Bristle brush. And I'm really just adding a teeny tiny bit of black to this quantity of blue. Okay. And conversely, if you were doing the larger quantity, you just want to add a little bit of black to it. I the feel like I'm going to be finger painting it <laughs> as it dries. So okay. just kind of plan for that as you are preparing that mixture. You don't I want hope to that's good. Um, bring it any more? as dark as you want it because it'll turn a little bit darker as it dries. Then I'm going to add a teeny bit of brown. And again, I don't need much for brown. That's not going to change the brown. darkness of the color. And also it will just give it like a more natural look to it. And then once you've achieved the shade that you want, which I've magically done in my big quantity over here, okay. um, I'm, I'm gonna going say to this be is good. Painting the sky, I know that I, got paint I my fingers. <laughs> have a bunch of other stuff that I'm going to be okay, putting on the sky, me? like clouds, a big huge moon, some what trees, a big rock, so I don't need this necessarily to be perfect, okay. but I am going to go for a kind of solid type of coat to it. Um, which where am I painting? I Just the whole canvas? Two layers of paint on my on my sky. My the, my this first layer of my sky. I'll probably do. Am I going all the way down? Twice, so I have a nice like, soft solid look to it. She's but not telling me what to do. I'm using that dark blue right now, predominantly on the left hand side of my canvas. I'm just okay. really. Um, adding it in this left to right brush stroke. You could certainly do circles or dots or crisscrosses, however you want to get it on here is totally fine. I'm working my way over towards the right hand side of my canvas and on the right hand side I'm going to use this dark blue down in the bottom right hand corner and as well as in the Oh my god, I'm going to be so messy. Right -hand corner. And then I'm going to start Adding that right hand white corner to this area with this dark blue. Because this is going to be where my moon is going to go. Bottom right. So I want this area of the sky to, in essence, be lighter than this area of the sky. So without washing my brush, I'm picking up some white paint. I don't feel like I have paint on it. Think of this as a circular kind of area because that's I feel like finger painting right now. Its glow. So if you just start adding white to this dirty brush and to the center area and then just kind of white to my dirty to brush. expand it out until you reach the um, white the darker blue region, that'll give you a nice gradient within your sky. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of keep adding my white as I get into the area that's going to meet this dark blue region I will start picking up the dark blue plus my white on my brush and that's going to give me an uh, area where I can blend the two. Well I can tell you I can really feel where I have paint and where I don't. Some shades of dark 
and that's going to allow me to get a really nice pretty so. gradient throughout that sky as I work my moon into right. the equation in a little while. And it, it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage. Well, right it's now, never going to be perfect. <laughs> blue, dark blue, and white on my brush to get these two areas to kind of talk a little bit okay. more together and dark get them to blue. blend in a little bit more together. And white. I don't and have any more dark blue. Oh, no. Kind of circular type of brush stroke or circular shape to this area to um, speak I need to, to make the more dark blue. of the moon. And oh, my the eyes are watering. And casting upon the sky near it. And then I'm okay. just going to kind of keep fiddling with this. Again, I may do a second coat just so I can get the, um, the dark blue to have a really nice solid look to it. But you might like yours the way that it is. Okay. These, um, yeah, I'm sure we're going to as we're blending them in together like this, they've been a little bit streaky, which is totally fine. Good. That is totally um, fine if it's streaky. If oh, my eye is bothering me. Awesome. Know that you are going to have a whole bunch of clouds on top of this, which will um, make it not so prominent, and you don't need to see the details as much onto it. But then once you've got your first layer to your sky, we will okay. be using the same brush, same brush for the next, for the next step. step. Oh, I get to wash it? So you can just, you can see what I'm doing right now. I just picked up some more of my dark blue and I'm giving it that circular kind of motion throughout the rest of it. But okay. you know, again, fill with yours, let it dry, see if it's as dark as you want or okay. as soft as you want. And then you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next okay. step. Here's my cup over here. I'm washing and drying. Wash, right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting our moon. Paint the moon. I'm going to be using a large bristle brush. Okay. The colors I'm using are white, brown, and black. White, brown, and black. Um, I forgot my set. You could certainly use some of your sky blue too, but I'm going to be using, I'm not going to be using right. that color oh. so the moon will stand out a little bit more. But I do want to forewarn you before you start this step that you do want to make sure that your canvas is dry, oh. especially where your moon is Got to blow dry my canvas. Um, so you could take that extra long right. break right now if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fanning method to get it dry, you know, creative-wise. Or you can just whip out your blow dryer like that. Got it. Got it. I can blow dry my hand, too. Okay, I think it's dry enough where the where the moon is gonna go. I'm hoping. <laughs> so I think the moon's going up here. Okay. So wait, I need to find my brush first before you press play again. Hold on. Okay, got my brush. Okay. All right, play. So whatever way you like to make sure your canvas is dry. I'm just saying white. So I am having my moon clearly up in this vicinity of my canvas. Clearly. I've got my moon. <laughs> A little bit, the the um the left side of my I think she's a little black, bit to the right white. of the center of my canvas. Mm -hmm. I've got it a couple inches over from the right, a little bit from the top. So mm -hmm. I'm going to give myself a couple of markers. And so that way when I go to create the circle for my moon, white. I've got a places to kind of shoot for. Okay. So I'm going to start with all three of those colors on my brush. A little bit of white. A touch of black, not a lot, just a little tiny touch of black and a little bit of brown pink. Okay, got it. For the crater kind of looking moon, as opposed to the big white bright moon. So got I'm going to make myself a little bit of a marker. This is about a quarter of the way over my canvas and down maybe about an inch, inch and a half somewhere around here. I'm going to come down about a quarter of the way down my canvas right about here, give myself a little bit of a marker. And then from here, I go straight down from here. This is a little bit below my halfway mark. So if my halfway of my canvas is right about here, I'm maybe about an inch below that. And then theoretically, however tall or however wide you space these two, which ironically is almost the same as my brush, you want to go that same width 
um, from left to right. That'll give you a circle. Or you can whip out like a paper plate or something okay. and give yourself a nice clean circle. So now that I've got those four markers, I'm going to just kind of connect them sure. with my with my circle. So I just kind of utilize my my sight to give me these curved edges. Oh no, it's too much. Like I need to put a little bit more paint on my okay, brush. Okay, we're just going to go with that. And oh, my brush is dry. Here, the only downfall about doing these type right. of oh, me. four <laughs> markers is I'm so messy. might tend oh, to I um, want to connect them Brown. like diagonally, and that'll give you almost a diamond type of shape as opposed to We're a just going to go for a moment right now. So just when We're just going to... By the time you're done creating like this. this circle type of shape, just step back and kind of visually look to see <laughs> actually looks like a circle sure. as opposed to like a diamond Be, again just because we've set these these so I'm just going place. where my Sometimes where my hand is taking me in the circle and we're just a, hoping um, it's something you know connect them with circular a straight line as opposed to a curved line and then once I've got something that resembles a circular feels shape, like I'm it's really big those three colors on my brush and okay. fill it in with circles. So I oh. use this rubbing kind of effect. Hmm. I want okay, some craters. areas to be lighter, oh, some areas know. to be craters. darker. So I'm um, going to utilize maybe a little bit more black in, black in one spot, maybe a little bit more brown in another spot, and I'm just going to okay. maybe a little more white in another spot. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of keep going inside until my mind. I have a variety of these grayish <laughs> type, grayish, whitish type of tones. Cool to resemble what resembles okay. to me like a moon filled with craters. And then what okay. I can do is I just kind of fiddle with those edges a little bit, making sure that I've got a okay. good enough edge to it. You can, if you want to, you can do a couple of different things to get this to pop out a little bit more. Sure, tell me how. Take, <laughs> take off my blind blue. Or even your dark blue, and you can give the edge a little bit of crispness sure. by just kind of darkening part of that edge. You don't have I'm going to gonna go skip that part. <laughs> I'm to, just going to go for the full moon here. That illusion of it kind of okay. going around the corner and having that I think I must um, have some craters. Type of look to it. <laughs> I went a little bit too dark in through here, so we're just going to blend that in with the rest of it. Okay. Um, and you can also, conversely, mm -hmm. you can put Maybe we'll a, give it a nice soft light edge. type of, or a very light type of edge Okay, I'm going to prepare myself for the next step so by washing my brush, because I'm sure I'm going to have to. Oh! I'm going to wash and dry my brush, okay. and then I'm going to put a tiny bit of just white paint on my brush. So okay. still just using the bristle brush, and you can take it and you can illuminate the the edge or the um, or the spot uh, right next to it with that right. really light color. We're illuminating so now. A little bit of white, Where's and just kind of get this edge to be a little bit brighter. Okay. And, or I can take that lightness and I can go outside of the moon a little bit. Okay. And put a little. We got bit this of that lightness right along the exterior. So okay. that's going to I got allow this. the edge of the moon to be visible on top of the I hope the cameraman's not laughing at me right now. Okay, it's illuminated. But if you felt like, oh, my, my sky's not popping out enough, you can certainly okay. do that. I'm going to wash and dry my brush just now. Kind of bring back some of your sky color and just get it to blend right in. I'm hoping I'm washing this in my water, not my tea. Your moon as much as you want. You can get that sky to glow. Oh, she's going to the next step. It. Again, like just white paint, but we'll be using our, um, we'll have some clouds around it that will get it to illuminate even more. And then we're going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your moon all on here, I'm going to add a little bit more brightness around this edge here just to get it to be a little more glowing. She likes to finesse a lot, doesn't she? <laughs> you can certainly, you know, play I guess when you can't see you what you're doing, and you don't you fiddle as much. That's a good lesson. This big brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, I'm ready. Let's do it! Alright, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting some clouds. All right. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. And again, I do kind of forewarn you to just make sure that your canvas is dry, even your moon, because I'm going to put some clouds in front of my moon. Pause. You can certainly put your clouds wherever you'd like to. Pause. So I just make sure my moon is dry. It shouldn't take but a second.
Okay, now let me find my brush. Got it. Play. So I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are predominantly white, but I will also be using black, brown, and my background blue. Um, oh, this I way forgot I, I had that. To okay. really just kind of white. look like they're part of the sky, and they can just white. be drifting by, and we can see through them, um, and they can have lots of depth to them. So I'm going to be leaving my top left corner of my canvas nice and dark. Okay. I'm going to have clouds just kind of drifting what it will seemingly be to the right. Okay. They'll be pretty light down in the bottom and pretty dark, airy in through here. And then I'll have some, a couple of really bright ones closing in or even overlapping oh, them. Okay. To show that the moon is kind of illuminating them. So when I do a step like this, I'm not going to be using a lot of paint on my brush. And I'm going to this be is using funny a listening to it. Circular type of scrubbing. Circular. Um, brush stroke where I can kind of manipulate that paint to be thinner and thicker in certain areas. Okay. And I want to have some of the clouds on the darker side so it looks like they are in essence kind of shadowed in some areas Makes and sense. illuminated in other areas from the from the sun. Or okay. from the moon. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm gonna start with a tiny bit of all four colors. So a little okay. bit of brown, a little bit of black, a little bit of blue, and I'm just kind of dabbing it in my brown. um in the color and it's I already have white. white. So I have all four of those colors black. on my brush at the same time. Blue. I want down in through here to be kind of light. Down um, in through but here. it doesn't have to go super duper light because we're gonna have some trees in front and I want you to be able down. to really see those trees. So okay. I'm just gonna start with those four colors on my brush. Down I'm gonna give myself okay. some soft um, maybe she means down kind here. Of airy <laughs> type of she says clouds. just sit down. <laughs> Form, down off the back. Whatever way that you want. Yours can be really thick. They can be really thin. It's going to be a visual preference on okay. your part. You know, a little bit more Unless you have a blindfold on. And I want some of my background to continue to be evident. So I'm not doing this really heavy paint. I just really am looking to get this softness on top that okay. looks like these airy mist or clouds or something just gently going through I that. I feel like atmosphere. I don't have any more paint in the brush. The brown is going to help to really make this look nice and natural um, along with that background blue. Yeah. So again, just kind of yeah. forming where I want them at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm not really using, picking up any, um, at this moment, any more white on my Oops. brush. I'm going I just into picked this up white. Region. So uh, I just picked up some of my background blue okay. and brown working with a dirty brush. Which Maybe I should the, pick, the pick the up more of my dark blue. Whatever view. lightness I had okay. over in that vicinity. You can probably detect or hear my brush really just kind of scrubbing. Yes, yeah, mine too. And again, must I'm just be, I must be doing a something. variety of the brown, blue, maybe a touch of black here and there. Oh, I just went over my moon. Nothing too um, okay. dramatic. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. I'm I don't think I have any paint on my brush. Type of look right now. In a second, I will start to add more lightness um, as I go towards that, towards the moon. But right now, again, oh, I'm already over the moon. Kind of tell myself where I want all of this atmospheric um, information to go. And you can certainly put a little bit up in this dark area just okay. to make I it can so do that. Not so flat looking, but that's going to be, again, a judgment call on your part. I'm going to go ahead and um, what was she done? put a little bit of these clouds floating by the moon. And I really want to kind of be cautious with okay. the amount of paint that cautious. I have on my brush. What colors? So I just took whatever colors I wanted, and then just okay. wiped it off on my paper towel. Uh, whatever so colors way, you want. I okay, white, brown. I'm going to stay away from black, because I don't... I don't want to go too, too and much. wipe it off on the paper towel, she said. I my background. I'm really just looking to give it this light, um, Okay, you know, do some more circles. Kind of drifty type of look where we can almost see through some of these clouds. Okay. And I'm still keeping them on the darker side at the moment dark compared to white um, because I want to be able to utilize that white in the mid to right. add that fluffiness or that real um I just keep scrubbing. It's going to come from the, <laughs> from the moon itself. So just I'm just keep on keeping on. Some of these 
clouds and you're here. Maybe I'll put this is such an unusual experience. Of the I'm so aware of how much paint is on my brush, but I'm scared really just to have too much paint. And how you're, how you're kind of seeing these clouds. If you want yours to be like mine, are all in my imagination right now. So I'm all my pretty clothes. much kind of put them where I want them. Okay. Now I'm going to add a little bit of lightness to them on on part of them that is facing the moon. Okay. So without washing my brush, I just picked up a little bit of white paint. And right. I'm going right. to just kind of add a little bit more lightness to some of these clouds on the side that is facing oh, the moon. There's my moon. And you could certainly, I mean, clouds have so many layers and fluffs and, you know, look to them. So you can certainly make yours and lighter or darker in various areas. But the, the trick is to keep some of that darkness showing. So again, you don't want to use a lot of paint. You okay. can really just kind of steer some lighter sections that are facing that that moon or closest to the moon. And that's right. Ooh, I, I feel like a little dizzy too. <laughs> I'm not I'm being able to see here. In through here, I'm going to have my little lighter. rock where my um, where my wolf is standing mm -hmm. in through here, and I want that to really pop out. So I want to make sure that I've got this area back here light enough. So when we do oh. put the wolf on there, wolf, it will said, pop over out here, maybe? Um, in a in a nice way. So okay, well, let's I just, just want to make sure that over here. this in through here. In a second, again, I will start adding a bit more lightness to the oh, ones right. Um, touching that moon but right now I'm just kind of working my clouds. Didn't I already add some touching the moon? I think I'm skipping ahead of her here. Them. And again, there's, there's no two sets of clouds like in this world, so yeah. you can certainly steer yours in whatever way you want. You can always bring back I just some added more white. I don't know if I'm supposed to do that. You used and just kind of keep manipulating these. Oh, maybe some of that right background blue. I'm pretty ready to start adding um, ready to add white. this to the ones right at the moon. So picked up a good amount of white paint. Ooh, good amount. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this real bright white right along where that moon is. And this and is going to add that extra special kind of um, illuminating aspect <laughs> to these clouds. And All right. the moon's going to pop out a little bit more because now I'm adding more contrast in front of it. Oh my god, and I cannot I wait to, to see what this looks like. <laughs> clouds that are right around the moon. You just want to kind of give some aspects okay. of the... Alright, just some, she says. Just in, some. You know, some of the parts of the of the clouds. I'm going to okay. move a little bit on the edges of these ones into here. Oh you can just God. kind of tap it along the edges if you want. Maybe a little bit down in through here. And again, I'm trying to concentrate on getting these brighter parts Oops, in the power. direction of where the moon is to, to tell the viewer that that's what's illuminating them. Okay. And then you can certainly fiddle with this all you want. I might add a little bit more here and there as I'm as I'm finishing up mine. Um, and then I'll be using oh. our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your clouds oh. in whatever type of uh. arrangement that you would like them to be, you can put this large brush medium away brush. She's going to take a sip. I know she is. Clouds are hard to stop just for the record. Now when you can't but see them, they're not hard to stop. Like you've got them in a, in a nice way that's... That see, when I'm all by myself in my studio, I have conversations with large brush Take out your medium brush. Oh, I have to spill my tea. Okay. Here we go. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're putting the first layer on our rock and our trees. So I'm going to use my medium brush. I'm going to use just black paint. So, again, this is one of those steps where you could certainly make it into whatever style of trees that you'd like or whatever kind of rock that you like, but I'm just giving okay. myself a black. big rock that looks like it would, um, like my wolf would have to climb up on it and there's a little bit of a platform on the top. And then I'm just going to do the tops of pine trees, which are a pretty uh, iconic and simple to paint type of tree. Okay. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to give myself a couple of markers so I know how big I want this rock to be. So I'm going to kind of find the center of my canvas from top to bottom. 
and from left to right. So I would say the center of my canvas is about here. I'm going to come down maybe an inch and a half to two inches and over to the left about an inch and a half to two inches. Oh, I'm going to make right myself right. a little bit of marker. And again, I'm just using black paint so we have a nice base, dark, a nice dark base coat for this. And then I'm going to travel down to the bottom of my canvas and over about two inches make myself over a where marker, to the which right or the left difficult for you to see on camera because I have a dark base but somewhere in this vicinity and then bottom left hand corner will be my third marker oh okay this so I'm going to take stick to the left from this marker in through here I'm going to bring it out a little bit and make myself a jagged kind of rocks edge so I'm going to take this and just bring it out a little bit to the right and then I'll just kind what? of wiggle it a little bit and then just bring it down in a jagged type of I don't know what she's talking motion about. to give myself this right edge of the rock. Right edge. And then I'm going to do <laughs> the guessed. same thing for the left side, only oh, no, I give myself that. a little bit of um, a kind of platform. It doesn't have to be flat. Oh. It can have a little oh. bit of a diagonal look to it. And I'm going to bring this out pretty darn far. And again, it doesn't have to be straight. I mean, it's a rock. So you can certainly get it to be in whatever okay. type of Hopefully formation made, that you oh, want. Am I going to have to color it in? A little bit, something like that. I'm going to paint it all in with black paint. Okay. So no fancy brush stroke because black paint really covers oh, nice I just and well. It. You just want to get a good coverage on it. We'll put a little bit of dimension with I can just look for wet paint with my fingers. Colors okay, we're just going to make a shape. Now I'm just looking to get the, the oh, no. base coat on here, the shape that I want. We're going to just make a shape. Because I can't follow Change my outline. Change the shape of your rock all you want. This is just one that I thought would look good on our, uh, okay. on our painting. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing my pine trees. So my pine trees I hope that are, like in rock. essence, going to look like tall triangles. But I want them all in different heights. Okay. So you can do tall in, triangles. This area here, I don't want what area? <laughs> any taller than my rock. So I'm all, I'm going to frame. Okay. Maybe my tallest one is going to be about Just this black, this it? height in through here. What and height? <laughs> maybe I'll make another one that same height, and then all of my other ones are just going to be various. Um, different heights throughout the way and all I'm doing right now is kind of giving myself what I like to call place markers which is just these hmm. um, vertical lines that are telling me where vertical lines okay. tree tops to go which I'm but not going to be able to follow like that yours in whatever um, way that you want that just kind of helps steer me in the right direction okay. and then I have a few over here on the left hand side so these ones I've got a little bit taller than this one the all ones right. on the right so I'm going to go maybe I would say about Oh, this high on this one. <laughs> this high does not work for somebody who can't see. <laughs> ones coming out on this area. All right, I'm going to just make some, pi some pine trees. All I'm going to do with my brush oh. is I'm going to kind of tap she said it not too so I get these kind of ruffled edges okay. to my to my pine tree. Okay. So you could use we can do a large brush if you wanted to have a really ruffled edge to these. You could so much for um, my place markers. Have fun with creating the exterior shape of them, whatever way that you want. But That's not what I fair. like to do is just make sure that I I maintain that pointy top to it. Okay, I so can do that. That this in fact is some kind of pine right. tree that has that iconic kind of triangular shape to it uh, and I'm just making sure that I have a full coverage down at the bottom. I don't know where my bottom. rock is. My so rock this is, is going to also full coverage at the bottom. I heard her say that. These are really tall trees and that wherever that wolf is he's kind of Oh, kind, he's climbed up taller than okay. these trees are, so maybe it's going to imply that he's on a really I high mountain some over somewhere here. or rock formation, and you know he is perhaps closer to us My than these trees are. Here. So by just doing the the tips of them down in this silhouetted kind of way, it's allowing for a lot of information to be told to the viewer as sure. to the scenery itself. <laughs> And you can see I'm, I'm really just being super carefree when it comes to adding um, the the different kind of branches or pine needles yeah. as they as they might be referred to on the sides of these trees. And again, you could certainly utilize that bristle brush. That'll give you a more organic type type of um, 
so it just makes sure so it's up. nice and, and full just down at the bottom. Branches coming out, making sure you have like a prickly kind of look. Sure, I can come from prickly. And a look that looks kind of natural. So if you've got to okay. stick out a branch a little bit farther here and there, just to give oh, a little bit more different. of a realistic look to it. If that makes your painterly sure. eye happy, then feel free to do so. Um, and then I've got these little... I'm telling you, this is super fun because I can feel like every brush stroke that I'm making, natural I don't know if I'm making it look right, but <laughs> it's really making me tune into you want one side to make the amount of paint and stuff. Bumpier, bumpier than the other, or have okay. that rope I don't know if I've got it looking right, but it certainly so is fun. It look like, you know, it just naturally has been weathered, okay. you know, it's broken some branches here and there, one branch kind of is longer than uh -oh. the other, that's what's going to give it that more I guess I'm not drinking my tea anymore. <laughs> making them different plates, making all right. them different so T is done for this um, they all are the same height episode. They all have the same characteristics oh, no. to it. It'll they'll look more like okay. a like a like a farm where they were planted all in a row. I was row, hoping I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> my tea was really yummy. Making them look different from one another <laughs> is going to benefit you in the long run. All right, well, I'm going to wash this brush. We're going to be switching to our small brush. Ooh, small for the brush. Next step. So once okay. you've got your trees all nice and assembled here, got it. You can put this. Uh, medium brush away wherever you'd like to. Take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. And take a sip if you don't have paint in your beverage. Right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting ourselves a little silhouette of a wolf. Oh. So I'm going to be using my small brush. I'm going to be using, using black? mostly black paint. We'll do a layer in black and then we'll put a little tiny illusion of some fur okay. on the chest. I have a feeling my wolf is going to be floating so in the I'm sky. Use my small brush. So. You can certainly utilize um, any silhouette of a wolf that you want, you can have them standing or sitting or, you know, like want howling or just looking at the moon, whatever you'd like. I'm going to have my kind of in a standing position okay. and howling in the direction of the moon. Okay. Pay so attention. I've, I'm going to have mine in this vicinity. Where? The way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to have Probably my on top of the rock. is going to be set up about, uh, I would say about a half of an inch above my rock. I'm going to do a basic shape like... The it's shape of a bean or a kidney wet. bean or something for the body. Then we'll add it. some legs, a tail, and a mouth, and some an ear, and we'll be all done. <laughs> so I'm going to go a little bit up above my rock. Okay. I would say maybe about an inch and a half I'm in that's from the right-hand side, and maybe about a half of an inch to an inch up from there. And that's going to be like the what? belly of my um, of my of my doll of my wolf. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come a little bit to the right of that, maybe about a half of an inch, and I'm going to go up maybe about two, maybe about two inches. That's going to be about where the top of my bean is going to go. So, and then I'm going to give myself a little bit of where I want that bean type shape to end. So I'm going to have that ending somewhere in this vicinity. That so must be with the those button. markers, that's going to allow me to kind of give myself. Oh, the this shape. is going to be. I'm going to call it a, <laughs> some kind of bean. Oh my then, God! Again, I don't we'll know make, what I'm doing we'll, here. We'll make it look like a wolf after we've got this this on here. So I'm going to bring this down. Okay, we're going to go here. with that as a bean bring shape. It just a little bit, or maybe it looks like um, like a seal or something like a a sea lion kind of. I don't shape even know if I have paint I on my brush like right now. So something like this. Is going to give me my initial shape. I'm going to color that in. Okay, let's with color black paint. The and again, bean. your shape can be a little bit different than mine. This is just. Oh my gosh. I like to oh. be able to start. Um, All right, I'm just going to go with this kind of shape or right anything here. Anything that's got a lot of form to it, I like to find a basic shape that I can start with and then just build off of that. Okay. So I'm going to build off of this. I'm going to give myself a couple <sighs> of front legs. So I'm going to front come legs. in here okay. just a little bit. Give myself a vertical line it's coming down to the rock. When you're doing these legs and stuff, just kind of make sure that you plan for the other mm -hmm. ones. So my two front ones are going to be pretty close to the mm -hmm. front Next of the body. Time. Like this and through here. They're yeah. not very far apart from one another. So I'm really just doing there. simple kind of vertical lines to, to yeah. get them on there. My back legs are going to, we're going to, see kind of um, 
<laughs> the legs. The, um, the thigh part, so I'm coming over here maybe about a half of an inch. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a curved line like this. I don't know what a, a curved line, line can mean. To put where that foot would go. And then I'm going to go I'm just ahead and put something that I think might look like something a... Something like this. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. The, um, if, if something goes wrong, you can okay. always bring... Up <laughs> We're just going to go with that. To I don't know what that is. So, you know, don't, don't feel the, the pressure of making this look perfect. And then I've got my back leg coming in through here. Well, I already made a back leg. Like this. Yeah, and again, I'm just going for a real kind of generic type of look to this, but you could certainly, you could certainly model yours after, you know... <laughs> What's in your head? A photograph. Model it. After what's in your head. Okay, I'm going to try and find it. I might, I might um, alter this a little bit once I've put the face and the tail and stuff on. I'm going to do my tail right now. Okay. The tail, tail of wolves, it's pretty wide right. when it's meeting the body. So I'm going to take up a good amount of this space with the bulk of the tail. Right, we're going to call that a tail. And then just kind of flip it out a little bit at the wow the this is and unique again, you experience make this really fluffy you can add it's little blue. bits of That's um, black. texture at the bottom okay. of it with just kind of pulling out a couple of pieces of fur at that bottom that'll give you a lot of texture and you could also hide that back leg too if you know if you, if you knew where it was exactly as you had planned you could certainly hide that with okay. um what next with your leg. i think i need to put a little bit of lightness in between these two legs. So this what? is one of those things that as you're doing this, if you, you know, if you're looking at it, it's like, well, that doesn't look totally right. You can come back. And okay, well, I'm going to imagine where the head is while well, she's talking because I think I can. That you feel um, are, are needed. I'm going to guess. This little thigh to be a little bit further down like it's that. It's tough to know where the tip of your brush there is. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the so nose. I'm going to do so a nose here. I've got my my area a in through here. I want to add a bottom jaw and then the upper muzzle part okay. and then um, a bump for the eye and a bump for, a the, bump for the eye. So the and bottom bump jaw the is going to go somewhere yeah. in through That's here. got to look like and it's going to be pretty small. <laughs> I want it to kind of go in the direction. Oh wait, I need to find it too, don't I? So oh, I should have left my finger there. Like my upper muzzle part yeah, is going to be a little again. bit taller. Oh. So a little bit taller, and it gets a kind of a little squared off nose. I'm going to just bring that up and kind of square it off okay. like that. And then it I'm just probably to totally smudged the whole thing. Not that it really would have mattered. Where the eye goes. So I'm going to just make sure this kind of. Works I think I need to put some fur. Like it belongs. That works out. I think I need the muzzle a little bit There's wider. Some white. Something like that. And then my ear is going right. to pop out about wow. halfway down that neck. I just pull a little piece of that ear out in through here. And then what I would do if I was you is I would step away from your canvas and look at it from a distance. Sure, let's do that. that. It looks <laughs> like it doesn't belong or it looks a little big or a little small. And then you just kind of keep adjusting. I'm guessing I need to do a lot of adjusting to this. But we're going to just have fun and wait for her to tell us about fur. And then what I'm going to do without washing my brush, I'm picking up a little bit of brown and white Got it. on my okay. brush. Brown and, and white. I'm just going to give a real faint and illusion of a little bit of that fur, fur. on that We're chest. Just I don't fur. want to go too um, invasive with it. I really okay, just want this my to look like it's in the silhouette. <laughs> um, and just adding and that tiny nine. bit of oh. texture to this oh, area. Oh, that's my tea we'll again. Darn it. Like well, not that I can drink my tea anymore. Um, moon. And then I'm going to be utilizing my medium brush for the next step. All right. You've got your beautiful wolf all nice and completed. You can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. And take a sip. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our rock and our trees. Excellent. I'm going to use my medium brush. I'm going to be using brown, green, and white, and if I need to, I'll go into black as well. Okay. So really what I'm looking to do is just add a highlight green, to green, these white. objects mm -hmm. from the moon. So my rock, I'm going to be using a lot of brown, and I'm going to be giving it some texture too, but also a highlight on sure. that right-hand side. 
And then the trees, I'm really just looking to kind of I hope she's going to tell me where my rock is. Little, um, <laughs> I know it's over here. The viewer that they're being lit up by the moon. All so right. I'm going to start with my rock. All right. I've got brown paint on my brush, and I'm going to take my brown right. paint, and I'm going to just wiggle brown. it predominantly on that right-hand side of the rock and just okay. bring some texture down towards the bottom. Wiggle so it, you right might side of the choose brush, to go right side really of the rock. detailed with this. You might choose to okay. go really subtle with it. It's going to be a visual preference on your part. The brown will get darker as it dries. Okay. So just know that even if it looks pretty light when it's wet, because of that black background, it will end up pretty dark. Mm -hmm. I want to give the illusion of this being kind of a platform on the rock, so I'm going to give a horizontal type of um, appearance in through there. If you want it to look like it dips down, you can make it darker. Then if you want it to look like it's protruding, you make it a little bit lighter. <laughs> And you uh, my fingers are so wet with paint. In it. I want it to progressively get darker towards this left hand know. side. If so I'm, I'm just right kind of running out of paint oh, there was as wet. I go towards that left hand side. Then I'm going to pick okay. up a touch of white. White and brown. brown. I picked them to both give up. myself a bright highlight on this right edge in through here. Okay. So white plus a little bit of brown, just kind of bringing a couple of sure. these areas out to that make looks them great. Look like I'm sure. Really getting a bit <laughs> of I'm, that I'm, this from is the moon, and you can so bring fun. this some of this lightness <laughs> uh, back. Trying to remember you where you put things. Look like there might have some it's, form. It, to it's this tapping into this might, whole you know, different piece in my brain right now. Facing that moon a little bit more. Okay. And again, this is one of those steps. Give it a couple minutes. We'll let it dry to see if you want to add any more to it. Okay. Adding a bit more lightness down here just so we can see more the, lightness? Um, the profile of it as it comes down into the bottom region of, okay. the, of the canvas. And if you feel right. that you went too much, like, oh my god, it's too bright, pick up a little bit of black on your brush, and that's going to help you bring it back to that original state or darken uh -huh. it as much as you Oops. want to. And then you just kind of keep fiddling with it until it's as textured as, as you want it to be. Okay. Once you've got your rock done, I feel like my rock I'm is done. I'm just going to wash and dry my brush and move on to my <laughs> oh, tree. Oh, wash and dry. The tree tippy tops are going to have a bit of green mm -hmm. on them. So I just washed my brush, took a little bit of green. That's and white. I think I'm going to use a little bit of brown too. Okay. Green and brown just green. to give myself a couple of little bits of uh, um, green. the appearance brown. of the okay. green color, the forest color on the tips of, of these Ooh, trees. some of this is still wet over here. Much, just kind of um, tapping my brush along those edges, and then I'll do the same green over on this left-hand side. So just, a, again, a tiny bit of green and maybe brown is right. um, giving me this look. And, of course, they'll take on some of that black that's underneath. Okay. And then I'm going to, without washing my brush, I'm picking up a teeny bit of white paint, and I'm going to do even less oh, of marks paint. along those edges. This is going to give me that appearance that from the other side where the moon is, oh, is I'm lost. Uh, okay, let's do some over here. Of some of these trees. I don't recommend you do them all, okay, just a couple. Things about or, here. You know, little bits here and there, so oh it my looks gosh. like some of the trees are in front and some are behind being shadowed okay. by other trees. Sure. So you don't necessarily just want to do them all, but doing a little bit on Triangles. some of them really helps to Triangles. provide that. That Triangle tips. That the um, moon Triangle is tips. giving light to the okay, maybe a little these bit of light um, over on this right side. Painting. And again, if you feel like you've gone too much, like I feel like a that little, little tip there was a little bit too much, I just picked up some black paint to right. uh, dull that down. Oh, I can't and tell if that's too much. <laughs> little tiny step left to go. So once you've got your trees and your right. rock, Oh, are we going to sign it? And again, feel free to just kind of keep filling I can't wait. I can't wait to take off my blindfold and see what done. happens we here. We are going to be utilizing Here's our my small brush. brush for the next step. So you can put this medium brush okay. away. I'm ready. Take out your small brush and get ready for the next okay. step. Okay, clinks. Let's, let's see it. Come All on. right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm not quite sure if in the last step I said that you 
I'm just going to use my medium or my small brush, but I'm going to use my small brush to sign my Good painting. Thinking. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going bottom left on this one. What color? I think I'm going to use my I'm excited. sky blue, my dark blue oh, color. Okay, I don't to, know if I have to any of that my left. signature here. Oh, I do. I do my initials, but yeah. you could certainly use your first name or the date or a symbol or All whatever right. you'd like to use as Any your paint because that is dry is totally I can feel fine. it and that is going to conclude this painting wait, i hope you wait, enjoyed my process done. i hope you painted yourself a beautiful night scene and i look forward to painting okay. and sipping with you again sometime. yeah me too okay wait wait let me put this oh my god let's see what i just did all right here we go reveal oh, <laughs> oh my god All right, well, it looks like a rock. Oh, look at my hand. My hand matches my paint. Looks like some trees. I got pretty good coverage. Look at, I only missed like around here and here. So good coverage. Almost a partial circle in through there. I'm going to totally call this one a success. <laughs> I hope you guys had fun watching. And maybe you'll try and do this at some point on your own. It's a great way to just like test some of your little sensory skills. So I hope you enjoyed.